Are we now joined by Chase Elliott? Nearing the end of our day, nearing the end of your day. We're getting close. Yeah. <laughs> you counting down the clock? <laughs> yes, sir. We are, this is our first uh, time ever having a station at Media Day. So we're like still like bouncing off the walls. I imagine this for you is like, man, just get out of here. Get me out of here. the finish line. Yeah, well, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, been thinking about it a lot. Now I can see it. So that's, that's good. We're close. You're do you close. Get, like, you can probably get the same questions for everybody. Do you just get Absolutely. like sick of the same thing or you just kind of go like, oh man, again, you're just asking the same thing? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand. Like, I, yeah. I get why it's, you know, what it is. But yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. Like, there's only so much you can talk about, right? Like, yeah. at some point, the questions are going to overlap. <laughs> sure. So, yeah. What is something that, Obviously, you got a zillion questions today. What is something that you don't think got asked enough? What is something that you like talking about that you're like, man, I wish more people would ask me about this? I've I've talked more today than I care to talk <laughs> in, in most any other 24 hour span. <laughs> well, let me ask you about your your hometown track. Atlanta this year is hosting the first round. Of the I've playoffs. talked about that. One. Yes, you have. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on it hosting the playoff race? I know there's been some uh, people kind of push back a little bit because of the yeah. unpredictability. I mean, I, I'm all for Atlanta having two dates for sure. You know, I, I think it's a place that has had some energy kind of relit into it since the repave at least from a fan's perspective man i couldn't tell you guys how many people come up to me locally that um just atlanta's back you know atlanta's back this is the greatest thing ever or you know taking the family down there next weekend to go you know watch the race and that's great you know for for ams and um i enjoy having two dates there you know it's nice to to have two races close to home and so I'm looking forward to going. I don't love that we have another plate race in the playoffs, um, but I guess if you were going to have it, another one to do it early is the best time if you had to pick. So, um, yeah, we're you know it is we're going. <laughs> it is what it is. We're going. <laughs> you don't have a choice. So, right? <laughs> yeah, we're headed. We're headed down there. These uh, these first two rounds, they almost seem set up to intentionally try to knock out knock out some of the top drivers and there's more and more things every year that seem to be thrown at you guys yeah to crazy it? make that the case <laughs> so w w you know this talk about the option tire would you would you like to see do you think it would add credibility to the chase format to the playoff format to have different tire compounds at a place like martinsville or phoenix or is, would that is that would more toward like another gimmick or something that would take away from the purity of the racing the option tire i think is a i think the option tires should be the least of our concerns of what is categorized as a gimmick or a um some sort of a you know we're we're, we're creating this drama right with, with the rounds and and so on and so forth um I, I think the option tire should be the least of our concerns as something that um is an issue in in that category because i do think there are places that it probably would end up being a good thing and could potentially be you know a, a decent storyline uh to follow i thought i went okay at richmond and um you know we've talked about this but i think as time goes on uh, I could see both sides of the argument, you know, one side being, do you just have a softer tire in general? Does that help the racing? I could see that, you know, I could certainly see that getting Goodyear to buy into having some failures though is going to be a hard thing to sell them on because that's probably going to happen with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so once that happens once or twice, you know, that's not going to come back. So, you know, is that realistic? Um, but I could also see having something different potentially being an okay thing because, the cars are going to keep getting more the same. We're more the same every week. You know, uh, how are you going to be different? How can you spice up a race to have some comers and goers, like we used to say, um, you know, throughout a four or 500 mile event? Isn't it so weird that like, I mean, this is, maybe I'm wrong in this. So correct me if I am. It almost feels like the pressure in a sense is, or the stress is on more round one and two because it's so crazy and unpredictable. When you get to round three, you have three tracks that you can go race at. Like it feels like way more control in your own destiny. Yeah. These first two rounds, it's like, ugh, some you get taken out by somebody's mess Sunday night. It's you're pretty much screwed in some ways, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, and and I, I wish we had, I wish we had as much as we could possibly have in our in our control. 
Um, just because I think the rounds and, and how short the rounds are already designed to where, man, those like, you could have a bad race. Like say you went to Charlotte, Kansas and Vegas, you know, in a round, I'm just giving you three tracks, mm -hmm. three examples of normal tracks. Um, you might go and crash, you know, at the first one or the second one or, or whatever, like that can still happen or, you know, have a failure or whatever it may be. But, um, yeah, you know, to your point, I would, I would love to see, you know, for, to crown our champion, you know, our, our season long champion, I would, I would really love to see as much, uh, as possible be in the drivers and the team's hands to control their own destiny as much as you, as much as you can. I wanted to ask you about Georgia football. You're a college football fan. It's my favorite sport. Uh, Bulldogs look good last week. Playing yeah, Clemson. they do. They do. They look really good. Well, your program for a long time was kind of considered like underachievers. And so what was it, what's it like going from a fan of a team that kind of like every year like, oh, is this going to be the year? It's not. To now it's like you feel like legitimately they could win the championship every single year. Yeah, it's been – I mean, yeah, I've been a fan as long as I can remember. You know, grew up going to games and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, Love watching them, and and for sure, I mean they were they were always really solid. Yeah. Like like they've never been just a they've never been bad. A, a, like a bad program or yeah. program, uh, as McAfee <laughs> says. But um, I think that it is just probably. I mean, it's fun being a fan because they're good. Like for sure. Like I um that's great, and I love that aspect. But one thing that I'm really you know, proud of, uh, proud to be a fan of them for is that they have never been a university, uh, or an athletic, um, whoever heads their athletic department to just like rotate head coaches in there yeah. every single year because they didn't win the national championship that year. Like, I, I hate that. They're not Florida. I, I hate that environment, you know, like they, like these schools bring in these coaches and they yeah. expect them to win like that year, or the next year. And if they don't, they're out the door, you know. And um, you had a classy, really good coach in there, Mark Rick, who did, I, I thought, a great job uh, for – he was a coach when I started watching, so I don't know about before him. Yeah. But um, he always seemed like a stand-up guy who, you know, uh, led a great football team. And then, you know, Kirby came in at the right time, and he was geared up and prepped and ready to go to work and kind of took it to the next level. So it's been fun just to, you know, to not – pull for a team that has that type of environment like it just feels um it's not a winner else kind of environment. Yeah, yeah it just i don't know it feels like a natural like it just fits yeah. uh, which has been fun you like the expanded college football playoffs i do yeah, yeah I, I think it was much needed for sure yeah even though that could i mean that could potentially be some upsets because i mean you're you're the type of guys that are going to get one of those top four seeds maybe anyway but yeah now this brings in it somebody could get hot you know yeah i i think though what it does is and to me, the area that it has helped is what it has done to the regular season. Um, you know, Georgia goes on a five or six game stretch where they're playing, you know, like Kentucky, Texas, Alabama, Florida, Auburn. Uh, I'm missing one. Oklahoma. Oklahoma there, yeah. or they're, they're Ole Miss all, is yep. in there or something. Um, I mean, in years past, you would have like big game – couldn't find anybody to play them so they had to pay mm -hmm. some little school to come into town to to play and as a fan like i would rather the games matter and if it don't work out for them it don't work out so be it you know at least at least we got to watch georgia and texas go head to head this week and then man next week we got georgia and alabama play and then the week after that you know they're they're playing auburn here in a couple weeks and tennessee like i just i think it's fun that the schedule is um meaningful and you know bringing some of those rivalries to fruition um, on on that type of stage, I, I think is big. Yeah, the SEC is packed, and it does give you a little bit of safety net too. If you do lose a game like last year, you lose at Bama and the SEC, you're still in the playoff because you had a right, incredible yeah. regular season. You could lose a game yeah. and it not be your not be your season. Yeah, exactly. Too. Anything um, that you would take from the college football, what what they do well, and apply it over here. I think they do a lot of things well. I mean, we we've talked about this, but I think the first thing is the length of the season. You know, they uh, they get a lot in. You know, in, in in a when I say length of season, I'm not necessarily talking about the number of races, but just the amount of calendar year that you burn in doing it. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, just just like we talked about a month or two ago, I just I mean, I'm a college fan football fan or football fan in general yeah. um 
and and their season is fairly short, right? And when it rolls back around, it's exciting. You know, it's yep. been waiting all year for this, yeah. uh, and I think that's cool. And and I think that that our sport could use a little more of, man, I miss that, and I really wish there was a race on this weekend. Um, and you know that sucks that it's not, but man, when it does come back, I'm going to be really fired up to to watch it. I think that's healthy. I always say absence makes heart grow fonder. Well, I think less is more. Yeah, so. same thing. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> same philosophy, you know. So appreciate it. 